How many sperm cells can you produce in one day? That's obviously a very important question, and I would argue that even if you don't come equipped with sperm manufacturing plants, that this is still important to you. Because let's be honest, if you have ovaries, these sperm cells are coming for you and what you produce on a monthly basis. So we need to know what type of army we're dealing with here. So let's use the cadavers. We'll go over exactly what inside the testes produces the sperm cells. We'll talk some numbers and even discuss how sperm cells aren't born ready to swim. So with all the maturity we can muster, let's do this. Now most of us have a pretty good idea that sperm is produced in the testes, but we wanna know exactly what inside is doing all this work. So we have a male cadaver here with a right testicular dissection. So guys, deep breath, here we go. So this is the right side of the inner thigh or the right groin here. And you can see this is the right testis. Now, obviously I've removed that from the scrotal sac, but even then you can still see it has a connective tissue covering, which we're gonna show you that we've removed in just a second. Then also we have the spermatic cord moving upward or superiorly. Now the spermatic cord contains veins, arteries, nerves for blood and nerve supply to and from the testes. It also contains a tube called the vas or ductus deferens. Now that vas deferens, you may have heard of a vasectomy before, transports sperm cells that are produced in the testis up the spermatic cord and eventually outside the body. We'll talk a little bit more about the vas deferens a little bit later in the video, but I wanna reflect or turn over the testis here and show our dissection here where we've removed that outer covering of the testis and you can see this is the actual right testis here pretty amazing structure you can even see on top of the testis there's this c-shaped structure here that we'll talk about a little bit fyi it's the epididymis but we'll get into that a little bit later but we need to show the internal anatomy of this right testis here we go look how amazing that is inside and if you look closely in there it almost looks like there's little these little stringy type things here. And these little stringy things are tiny little tubes that are in each testis, and these little stringy tubes are called the seminiferous tubules. There are up to 900 of these in each testis. That's why, again, it looks like little stringy things. They're tiny. And these seminiferous tubules are where sperm cells are produced. Now, the process of sperm cell production is referred to as spermatogenesis. And we know spermatogenesis occurs in these seminiferous tubules. And I want you to think of these tiny little seminiferous tubules as little tiny hoses. And we know if you took a hose, you know the wall of the hose, typically made of rubber. And then we have the inside of the hose where there would be fluid flowing through. We call the inside hollow space the lumen. But the wall of these seminiferous tubules is where all the magic happens. Because embedded in the wall are these stem cells that actually produce the sperm cells. These stem cells have a name. They are called spermatogonia, which kind of thinks or sounds like this mythical land where maybe we could think of sperm cells being produced by spermatogonia or in the land of spermatogonia. So those spermatogonia, those stem cells embedded in the wall of the seminiferous tubules are pretty busy and producing sperm at what some may consider an alarmingly high rate. They can produce up to 300 million sperm cells in one day. If we were to average that out over a day, that's approximately 12.5 million per hour, 208,000 per minute, and about 3,500 per second. I just created 3,500 sperm cells and 3,500 more. Look at me go. So before all you males go out there making claims that you create troops at a ridiculous rate, we have to first understand that these troops, it takes a while for them to develop and they're not born ready to swim, or in other words, they are non-motile. What's crazy to think about is if I go to this dissection, these seminiferous tubules that you're seeing in here, that development or that spermatogenesis takes up to 65 to 75 days. So these are developing within the wall of the tube for 65 to 75 days before they even get into the lumen of the tube and move down to the next structure where they're stored. So let's kind of review and put all of that together here. So if we take a look at the testis again, you can see if we go inside, there's all these seminiferous tubules here and here. And that's where the spermatogenesis is taking place for 65 to 75 days, and specifically just in the wall of the tubule. For 65 to 75 days, they haven't even made it into the actual hollow space or the lumen. But once they hit that point, spermatogenesis has occurred, 
65 to 75 days later, the sperm cells will move into the actual lumen so they can move to the next structure in the testis. So coming back to this again, let's pretend we've moved into the wall of those seminiferous tubules. Those sperm cells will then get propelled in this direction towards this structure called the epididymis. Now there's some collecting tubules that we have to go through to get from point A to point B here. Those seminiferous tubules will first drain into these straight tubules or straight ducts, then to the reedy testes, and then from the reedy testes to the efferent ductules of the testes, and finally into the epididymis. Now once the sperm cells are in the epididymis, we used to nickname this place Swim Academy because this is essentially where the sperm cells become motile or fully mature. And again, this is this epididymis, but what you're not seeing with the naked eye here, that there is one really long tube inside this epididymis that if we were to stretch it out, it would be over 20 feet long. So you can imagine the sperm cells are just moving through this tube passively and then eventually gaining motility. And then this is where the sperm cells will be stored until they are called upon. So if we're talking about the total timeline here, let's say we've got about 65 days in the seminiferous tubules, a few days to move from the seminiferous tubules into the epididymis, and then up to 14 days moving throughout the epididymis where they fully mature and become motile. If we're adding all that together, that can take over 80 days for these troops to be ready from start to finish. Luckily, this is kind of like we said, a daily process of like almost 300 million being ready each day. So you've got this set of 300 million and this like assembly line of sperm cells just coming and coming and coming each and every day because there is a very important target that these cells need to get and that is the cute little ovum. So the last thing I wanna mention here, once the sperm cells have gone through that 80 day process, they've essentially moved down to the inferior aspect of the epididymis where they are waiting to be called upon and they're in close proximity or connected to this other tube called the vas deferens here, or the ductus deferens. Now this ductus deferens or vas deferens attaches to the inferior aspect of the epididymis where those mature sperm cells are hanging out. So they can easily be propelled into this tube, which will eventually take the sperm cells up the spermatic cord and out of the body when they are released. Now the average male can release anywhere from 2.5 to five milliliters of seminal fluid. Now, if you break that down even further, one milliliter of seminal fluid can contain anywhere to 50 to 150 million, 50 to 150 million sperm cells. So let's say you're on the high end and each milliliter of your seminal fluid contains 150 million sperm cells. That means during one potential release, you could release an army of 750 million sperm cells. Now that seems like quite the army to release to seek, find, and fertilize one egg or one ovum in the female reproductive tract. But the female reproductive tract or this journey the sperm cells go on is a treacherous one. And not all these sperm cells will survive. And technically, typically one fertilizes the egg. So I want you guys to think of this from this perspective of, you know, 2020 was a rough year. Go with me on this. We've all had some moments of sadness, depression, and feeling down on ourselves, but I want you to think about this. During male release of sperm cells, millions, as we saw, were released. You won the first race of your life, so you should be happy about that. Thanks for watching our video on sperm cell production. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and as always, blow up the comment section below, and safe travels to all the sperm cells out there.